Well, today's going to be a fun day. Today we're going to be alloying, right here, right now, some 14 karat palladium based white gold. Uh, for that, we have 999 pure gold, we have some pure silver, we have some sterling, I have some copper, a little bit of palladium. We've got a couple tricks here, and using our your ever trusty grain scale, we're going to uh, get this down to the old molecule. And I have a pre made, pre mixed white alloy. Um, this basically contains everything that uh, I need to make the 14 karat white alloy, and you can tweak it either for nickel base, which I never use anymore, and toss in. Once all is said and done, you weigh out the gold, you weigh out the alloy, figure out how much you need, and there's going to be a proportionate amount of palladium that you just toss in at the end. And that's no problem. You just throw that in. Um, we're going to be basically melting them on site, pouring them on into ingots on site, and I'll be showing you how to do that and how to measure them up, or at least the way I do it. And when all is said and done, we're going to have um, a few cool metals and alloys to play around with. So... Let's get started. I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll just melt some pure sterling silver and form a sterling silver ingot. Just basically get the first pour out of the way and we'll get going. All right, so stick around. Um, we'll add the next segment right after this one. So hold on, here we go. Okay, first up, we're gonna be making our sterling silver alloy. We're gonna be pouring into that ingot mold. Now, I've already seasoned the mold. Why not season it? I've, I've treated it by heating it up. You always have to heat up your molds. If you not, when the metal hits it, it will be like cold water hitting a hot frying pan. It pops. done that before it's you should do it when in doubt hit it more okay we have here an induction coil with a platinum crucible uh, this machine is well beyond my means it's probably beyond yours this is, none of this equipment really belongs to me sorry for the bench however if it is within your means I highly recommend it so I've already heated it up which is not really I do that because I don't like when metal gets stuck in the neck however whatever you feel safest with now, now you should obviously. This is a pre-mixed batch. When I make when I make gold alloys and I'm measuring for gold and ratios, I don't play games with the silver because one mistake is you know quite expensive. So now let me see if we can get the better. folks okay there we go see the silver it's roiling it's moving around that's the crucible telling me it's shutting off it's turning back on okay silver is moving around now obviously you should stir your alloys if you're mixing them which we will be doing with the gold however uh, this is a pre-mixed batch. I know it's uniform and homogenous, so all you have to do is just make sure it's totally melted, which it obviously is, and we'll be pouring. So, all right. Once again, we're gonna just make sure the crucible's nice and hot. the crucible the mold. The crucible is plenty hot. Okay. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. A nice even pour. Just a fluid motion is what you need. You can I've heard you can have to start at the side, the back, the end. Try it out however you like it and see which way makes you comfortable. I prefer to come the way you saw. Anyway. What basically matters is that the mold is hot, the neck of the 
Crucible is hot, however, wherever it's going to pour out of, because you'll have a really high crucible, you'll get the metal all nice and melted, and then when all is said and done, the, um, it comes back at you. Because it gets stuck in the neck as you're pouring. I'm sorry about that. I was playing. Anyway, so you'll be pouring it out, it gets to the end where it meets, you know, the funnel part of the, of the, of the crucible, and that part is cool. If that part is cool, the metal will start to solidify and it clogs up. Make sure that's nice and hot, and then once that's done, it's the motion, a smooth, steady motion. You'll get a smooth, steady billet. Uh, ingot, rather. Okay, so, next step coming up. That was pouring out the sterling. Alright, so that might need a little more tweaking, but as you can see, we basically have a balanced out. Oh, I have it on the right side uh, is um, two American wheat pennies. They weigh four penny weights total. Uh, I want to make four penny weights of 14 karat white gold palladium based alloy. I took my alloy mixture, threw in a little bit of palladium. I think it's, uh, it's, I have the alloy mixture upstairs. I will post the recipe in the description. And the rest in that the left side, 58%, 58.5%, 14 karat gold. I'm sorry, 999 fine gold. So basically, 2.32 penny weights of 999 fine gold. And the rest of the mixture reg uh, comes out to four penny weights total. That balances out against the pennies. So I weighed it out, actually, you know, obviously, using the digital scale. And then you fine tune it using the grain scale. So this thing is, this mixture is ready to go. We're going to pour that into the ingot next. And we'll be on our way to making some 14 karat white gold makume. See you then. All right, so now we have one-fifth of an ounce of white gold, 14 karat palladium based, and one ounce of sterling silver. Now well, these are going to be milled out, turned into, into sheet, or, you know, just strips really. And then we're going to stack them, bond them, fuse them, and we're going to cover that whole process in the next video. And we're going to be making some 14 karat white gold and sterling silver makumegani material, turning that into some jewelry, adding some diamonds. It's going to be a good day. So, uh, stick around, get in for the next video, it's going to be great, and we're going to cover basically the whole process, and we will see you then.